Uh, these were the presentations prepared for this session. At the end of the session, uh, we have uh, requested our distinguished guests who are here and have spent some time with us to share their experiences. And for this, I would like to call uh, in charge of our external affairs, Mr. Anas Alupsai, to please come on stage for that. convention, it's a tradition that we invite, invite external guests um, to explain uh, their expressions and impression of uh, the annual convention and also um, give some thoughts <coughs> around uh, the activities and the words of Jamaat if they have any experience of that. Obviously in, in Finland um, there has been a, a small setup um, and we will see, hopefully, uh, long days and, and, and years to come of uh, integration and development. So we have uh, today few guests who have uh, accepted this um, offer and, and have um, expressed that they would come to stage and uh, talk about their, their impression of the Jalsa. First of all, uh, I would like to invite respected Mr. Ivan Berazni, uh, who is a senior lecturer at Haga Helia University. So I would please like to invite you on stage to say a few words. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. This, I suppose, is on. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 This is a surprise to be here. I am very humble, as you said, and I, I have a few impressions like everybody in the audience that I might share. I'm carefully asking you what is the schedule. And uh, we're talking about 10 seconds. A few minutes. A few minutes. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, um, I would like to thank my student, Sharap, who um, has repeatedly um, invited me to this gathering and I have very warm thoughts of gratitude and uh, a willingness to know more about the, the community and I have a very strong respect for, for your noble aims. Um, I'm very limited in my uh, ability to um, be an expert in theology for instance. Um, I have had various um, very rewarding uh, uh, encounters with Islam through my life, um, starting with childhood and later on in life. Um, what I uh, know from my experience as an educator in Finland um, and outside of Finland is that uh, we need patience, we need um, willingness to understand and we need benevolence in order to engage with human nature. Human nature is a very complex uh, phenomenon and unfortunately uh, it displays itself uh, across various contexts and uh, challenges not in a very positive way and when having patience, willingness to understand and benevolence we can uh, come back to the initial promises that all of our cultures and religions have had so, and I think today I saw this patience, willingness to understand and benevolence so, and for that I'm very thankful that you unveil uh, the true spirit of camaraderie that, that exists in the world. So, th these are my impressions. Thank you very much for listening to them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time and uh, your kind words. And now I will like to invite our next guest, <coughs> respected. Carl Gustav Henriksen, a reverend and master of theology, to come to stage and say a few words. Thank you very much.
Mr. Chairman, distinguished friends, I am very happy to be here today and very honored. I had some other things coming up, although I'm already retired, but I chose this and I have not uh, had any chance, any reason to uh, be of a different opinion. I want to take you back uh, some years. Uh, 1957 to 1965. Uh, uh, sitting here now listening to what was being said and read, I could see how those years were affecting my way of thinking and acting. I've been working in Tunisia, I've been working in, uh, in Tanzania, I've been working in the United States and mainly here in Finland. When I returned in 1975 to Finland, I felt bad. I felt like the ceiling would be low here in Finland. And the reason was that I have been, during the years, getting the gift of being exposed to different ways of thinking, different ways of praying, different ways of living. And only slowly, we up here in the cold north have been coming, following what happened in the world. A different thing coming up. Uh, in some uh, 20 years ago, I asked a colleague of mine, how come that in certain towns of Finland there is a hatred to foreign people and foreign things coming up? He got quiet and he said, well, it looks like the hatred is coming up. As long as we are living here on this earth, there will be hatred around us. And there will be fighting around us. But the hatred on those particular places in Finland that came up, he said, has been coming up because the love for other people also had been coming up. And that was stronger. Why we talked more about the hatred, he didn't, uh, he wasn't able to explain. But he said he was quite clear that because foreign people coming into this country had been loved so much more than before, also some hatred came up. And this has been a very helpful vision for me uh, when I've been. Uh, trying to follow what happens in Finland today. 15,000 pe 15, people at least were explaining that we want to have a more open society. We want, to want if not to, to get the ceiling away, at least get it higher. And I think this seminar here and this convention uh, also is one part in this movement uh, and I'm applauding uh, this to happen. This means that I can start breathing again in my home country of Finland. And then the third thing um, uh, that I came to me when I was sitting here listening. You talked about uh, in several readings and several saying is also about obedience. It's good that we are obedient to the place where we are living. On the other hand, it does not mean, and it may not mean, that we are staying on the level, same level all the time. The society we are building has to be developed. It has to be moving forward. I 
I'm not a politician. I tried to be once, but I failed. <laughs> uh, but I've been following what happened. And I'm missing one group today. I'm missing the group worldwide that was called the Wall Street group. You remember the young people who were putting up their tents? Uh, I, I don't know that their method would have been the most beautiful, but uh, their message, we cannot develop this world if we just think we should consume more and more and more and more. We already consumed this year as much as the world can produce. Now we are living on borrowed production. And you can look at me, I have, I'm also living on borrowed, <laughs> borrowed uh, production. Uh, there is a big task, not only on the theological strictly book level, which we have got a good doses of today. But in the practical life, we do need to have a different world ahead of us and combine the difference with obedience to our Heavenly Father and to the different ways we interpret His message to us. Thank you. Thank you. May God bless us all. Thank you very much for your kind words. And uh, <clears throat> I can also relate my personal story. I was born in Pakistan. Uh, brought up in Liberia in Africa and I've spent over 12 years in Finland so I don't actually know um, where I'm from so I'm from all of these countries um, then our next revered guest uh, respected Mr. Mick Kolestola uh, Reverend Father Orthodox Parish of Helsinki I would like to welcome you on stage to say a few words Thank you. here in Helsinki, I want to express my joy to be here today. Uh, we guests are few here today. Meidänkin kirkokunnassamme on tahoja, jotka olisivat huomattavasti niin pätevämpiä edustamaan tässä kuin minä. Uh, there would have been many other people who could have represented us better. Uh, itse oikeastaan olen tässä edustamassa 
sitä monokulttuurisuutta, mistä äsken puhuttiin. I am representing the monoculture uh, that was uh, addressed. Olen 70-luvun nuoria, siksi minut on sidottu tähän suomen kieleen. Olen, olen sen ajan kasvatti, jolloin meillä oli ikkunat ja ovet ummessa. Uh, I was brought up during the time when both our doors and our uh, windows were closed. Suurin ongelma on se, että meillä ei ole vieraiden kulttuurien lukutaitoa. Problem is not that we, that we do have or not have. We do not have the, we do not have the ability to read the different cultures. Yes. Minun ikäpolveni suomalaiselle Islam on monoliitti. Uh, to my uh, age group, Islam is monolithic. Uh, on kuin ei erottaisi Moskovan patriarkkaa uh, amerikkalaisesta heluntalaisesta. It's like we would not uh, uh, differ the patriarchate of Moscow from American Pentecost Pentecost Kuinka voidaan silloin olettaa, että me voisimme nähdä kuinka paljon siellä pohjalla on kuitenkin sitten yhteys? Uh, how come that that we would be able to uh, see all the common things that are there behind? Kirjan uskontonahan me olemme serkuksia. Uh, we both are religions of the book. And we are white cousins in a way. Ja itse asiassa itse ortodoksisen kirkon edustajana tunnen olevani tämmöisessä kulttuurillisessa välitteen tulkin asemassa, vaikka en nyt tulkitse kielellisesti. I feel like being in the middle between uh, different cultures. Uh, trying to be a dolmetscher, although I'm not dolmetscher myself right now. Joo, tämä päähine on selkeä kulttuurillinen. My hat is one of the cultural signs. Ortodoksisen kirkon edustajana minulle ei myöskään ole kulttuurishokki, että ne miehet olemme täällä ja naiset naapurikuoneet. To me, being an orthodox, it isn't any shock that uh, the women are not here with us and we are just here men. Mutta kuten eräs rabbi, joka tapasin Hanian, Hanian synagogassa, johon, jossa pääsin osallistumaan heidän palveluksensa, totesi, pahimmat taistelut ja riidat jäädään perheen parissa. <laughs> okay, I try to. <laughs> I'm not trying to make any control on what you're saying, but I'm translating from a uh, from a, a language which is not my mother tongue and to a language which is neither my Great. mother tongue. <laughs> this is this is our, our problem with our minorities. <laughs> I'm I'm used to that. Uh, the Swedish minority in Finland has always been the, uh, our uh, window to the, to the world. <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe I'll try to help you and, and, and I'll try, try to go, go in English further. So, so I want to try to say that it was that uh, as an old rabbi who I met in, in Hania, Greece, told me that, okay, we are all, all the uh, children of the religions of books, but as you know, the worst quarrels happen always inside homes, in between the uh, family. 
And that's, that's how it is in our world also. Uh, that's why Rome and Mecca and Jerusalem are so far away. But, but as uh, in the uh, speech here was mentioned the um, uh, Sinai uh, Monastery and Mountain and the very important document of Mohammed there. So both symbolically and, and uh, very practically uh, Sinai somehow is the meeting point in between our traditions. I have the experience of um, climbing to Mount Sinai with Muslims, with Jews, <coughs> welcoming the rising sun, what is one, what is common for us all. And symbolically also this uh, climbing to the mountain is a very powerful symbol of all uh, honest searching of, of uh, of the spirit. To get to the mountain, we have to choose choose the path, and we have to follow our own path. I must be uh, obedient to my own tradition. I'm a Christian priest. I have chosen my path, but I have no problems to see a friend on the other path, climbing to the same mountain. And this is the way we are all going. In our large family of uh, the uh, religions of books, they are those who are waiting inside Messiah. And they are those uh, who are um, who already has seen him. And in this sense also, we are very near each other. And uh, being in this situation make people humble, make people, uh, they have to take the challenge because they can't say the better world is coming, the world of peace is coming, but they have to take the challenge, they have to take the responsibility to bring the peace to the world now. And that's why uh, we, as you, have to, as we say, take our cross and try to strive <coughs> for a better uh, future. Uh, so, uh, I hope that I am in my humble way in the future and I can be somehow uh, helping to uh, make these contacts uh, regular and get further this common work. Uh, I'm grateful that you have now been the one who uh, take the initiative. It should be the Christian Church, but it often happens that we just stay in our own churches, in our own groups, in our own prayers. But as you told in the beginning, we are all representing minorities. You as a lingual minority, I as an orthodox priest, you as a minority of a minority of a minority somehow in Finnish culture. <laughs> Maybe it's natural that the initiation came from you, but we have to uh, join uh, the work and 
try to focus together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for your um, suggestions and also a good talk, kind words. And uh, I would I would have to say that uh, the biggest help that we can do for each other is to help each other do what we intend to do. So all our fingers are not equal, but we still are on the same hand. So that's that's the whole idea. Uh, next guest, before I invite the next guest, um, I also have to say that there are also very respected guests on the ladies' side, um, and, and they're watching also live, um, and uh, they also might have some expressions on their side which they can write down and, and send to us, and we can share on stage here. So uh, I would request to get that from the ladies' side. Thank you very much. Our next respected guest is uh, the police specialist uh, in the preventing uh, police unit, Mr. Hari Swainin, and I'd like to invite you on stage to say a few words. Thank you very much. Thank you for this uh, chance to be here and talk to you. It's like special thanks for your national president and your community imam who was the first person that I met from your community. Uh, it's very difficult now, it's been here so wise words, but I'm a little bit worried about if there's still some left for me. But uh, it's like in Finland we have joke and that's why we have two boys in the car and one can speak, uh, read and the other one know how to write. So I met the third one and I cannot speak well. So I'm sorry about that. But I wrote like some impressions what I get from your community. And it really looks like I wrote like some car deal or manual that booklet here. So I write here modern, flexibility, active, dynamic. That's how it sounds like for me. So I, I make in my work many communities, uh, different backgrounds. And even in the start of that, it's some people, the reason why they are in Finland. It could be in their home country that they believe it is the local authorities. The local police could cause that uh, pain or that misery that they have to leave their home. So in here it's very difficult to uh, build up some um, trust <coughs> between Finnish authorities and the people. If it's the start, it's like that. But um, like I opened, read these booklets and a few words, like in your uh, founder, it says, the renaissance of Islam, and that sounds like very nice to me in my ear. Uh, the Renaissance, it's like you are modern, you are able to break those walls what's between uh, Finnish society or the Western society and your own. Also like what I read, it was the rights, human rights, women rights, what's very, very important. The main picture of what Finland have, unfortunately, is that what the Western uh, media bring us. And it's really like quite common, like what the Daesh right made in Syria, Iraq. That's the main, main picture of what people have in their mind. And that, that task, that job, what you are doing is to, I see the right way. I see, see a lot of uh, dark clouds around us, especially this uh, economical situation, what's coming on, the huge problem and refugee problem, what's coming from uh, North Africa, what's coming from Syria, Iraq area. 
it's a very difficult task in the future. If you've also used what happens in your vascular, it's really like that uh, what we all, we all have to find against. And the main, main goal is like that we open our society, you open your community, bring the, the different pictures in people's heads. As it's not that jihad, uh, but it does so us. There's something more about your religion. There's two words what I want to change in Finnish mind. They are the jihad and then it's the burqa. I want that you help us to change those pictures. What's the jihad? It's nothing to do in that jihad, but they are in their mind, it's doing in true Islam. And the burqa, it doesn't mean that those women behind the burqa, they are not, they don't have rights or they have to marry. There's two things, and they are very important that we have changed them. But I see really, really bright future of that uh, uh, cooperation that we could have. And all, I can promise you that all support from uh, Helsinki police authorities we are, will give to your community. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, and uh, jihad and the wrong understanding of whale. Um, I think that's a that's a common thing we have to do. And from our side, uh, instead of um, beating down in physical sense the extremists, it's the logic and uh, um, real possibility of dialogue that can remove that. And and I appreciate your talk on this, especially from our side, love for all, hatred for none. These two, the pair, love and removing the hatred is very important. So thank you once again. Uh, next uh, respected guest is uh, Mr. Yari Hubila, who is a, a teacher. So I would like to uh, welcome you on stage to say a few words. Thank you. So it's pretty honored. I'm, I'm surprised that I'm standing here and saying something. <laughs> so, so yeah, I'm a teacher, and then uh, what I have done before, I was, uh, I've been working in the church. So if I present, represent now the minority of minority of minority or something, <laughs> uh, but about this, like what I'm, uh, what I can say, I'm very happy. I'm very glad that I get to know, get to know, because uh, of my lovely neighbor, Mr. Khan. Um, and he has told a lot of about uh, your project, that you are nice people. Because uh, I have learned about Islam, that, that uh, all the uh, Muslims are terrorists, and, which is very sad. That's very sad thing. And then, uh, because, you know, if someone thinks that you are bad and you try to make your good things, it's just things aren't working at all. So, I, I worked in uh, Ethiopia two years and then I started to realize okay, here's different cultures and my culture is not the best one. That, that, but uh, what I have learned, if I make this way, everything goes well. And it might be there's also uh, another kind of. Uh, way to go through this life and then survive very, very well. And a very great thing that I learned about this life, uh, greetings, simple thing, to be a friend uh, with another people in your country or other country. Like in Ethiopia, it was very hard for me. As you know, you live in Finland, we are very relaxed and we don't smile, <laughs> we don't say hi, even we want to. But in Ethiopia, uh, I have to learn that, that if I meet someone, I have to shake hands, always. If I don't, it means I hate him, I hate her. 
Sen tulee niin sen hyväksi. And of course in Finland you have noticed when you walk on the street and uh, Finnish people are walking very close or your neighbors, Finnish neighbors, they will close, you can hit them, still they will say nothing. But here like if you smile and say hi, uh, it helps, it's good stuff. For all the all the missions what we make, if we are just saying hi, saying hi greetings and get to know each other that uh, because we are scared about foreigners. You we have uh, said many times here that, that we need to know about more about these good things, especially your uh, mission about Islam, that there's no war. There's no war. You don't hate us, you don't hate Christians. And you want to live in peace. And I believe uh, we can't. We all can be uh, Muslims. We all can be uh, Christians. We have to be friends somehow. So I love this. What you are doing? All this and spreading the word. And I said, Khan. Now what is this? Uh, Eid. It was a couple of weeks ago. And then Eid Mubarak. Eat, uh, and, uh, people, but I still love like <laughs> so, so, like that, that, okay, I get a card that Eid Mubarak and what they have done, what you are doing to, uh, during the fasting time. That you are giving, uh, supporting some, uh, giving money for charity and st that stuff. I didn't know that at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, this kind of simple little things uh, it, is good stuff. Because I'm like, if there's the grass, I'm the one piece of little sand. And uh, there's a lot of this kind of sand in this country who will know at all. But if they could know these kind of things, the Finland needs this. I believe Western countries see this kind of simple information. And then if we got these little groups, like they say, little drops make the big river. So, so we need that. And then I'm very happy to be <coughs> honored to be here. I don't have very any huge big words, but uh, what I hope, uh, what you can say to your neighbors, say hi to all Finnish people. If they are looking like this, like my normal face, like this, say hi again and keep it up doing. They will, you can break the ice. Smile helps. We can also smile. <laughs> <laughs> it happens sometimes. Yes, I do. <laughs> so, it's like, it's a very fun country. I have a lot of. When I go away from Finland, I can see my country, I can see me about in the mirror. I believe like you have known a lot about your country when you leave Finland. And then it might be very shocking this place. Like we all love winter. <laughs> so so may God bless all a lot because we all need that. And then, that's that's a good way to survive. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Definitely there were some things that I can second. Um, now we have uh, some expressions from the lady side. Uh, and before I go through that, I can tell a short story. Was it uh, two and a half months ago, three months ago, we, with a few families, went to the Orthodox Church uh, to find out um, their belief and uh, just to know each other. And uh, in that spirit, we also invited some lady, ladies' guests. And I would like to share with you so there are uh, two messages from their side. Uh, first one is from uh, respected uh, Shrestha Yunko. Shrestha Yunko. And uh, she writes, humanity needs love and support these days. We all come from different backgrounds and today was the golden opportunity to know about Islam and Ahmadiyya Islam community. When I was hearing about Islam, I was relating teachings of Krishna and Jesus. I realized it teaches about peace and love too, but we happen to interpret it in our own ways. When I think about spreading 
and peace towards a target to make Earth a better place to live. I feel home to be part of this celebration. I am honestly thinking this is one of the amazing experiences to combine faith and humanity. Today, I feel embraced with liberty and honesty within this community. Thank you very much for spreading this great motto towards us and thank you for helping eliminate false impressions towards Islam. I am thankful and hope may peace prevail within us all. Amen. Thank you very much for these great wise words. The other message um, is uh, without a name, uh, but it's a very good message. I hope, it says, I hope one day when people will think about Muslims, they will mean Ahmadiyya Muslims. So, uh, I hope that day is coming very soon. Thank you very much for these words. Uh, now for the last uh, speaker of this session, um, who is an international guest. Um, and he, he is here from another continent, from Africa, from Ghana. And uh, he represents actually the real on the ground uh, experience of what uh, this community is doing in places like the third world in Africa, especially now in Ghana, which is the leading port of uh, Jamaat in, in Africa. I would like to invite respected Al Haj Abu Bakr Yakubu, who is the principal of Ahmadiyya School in Ghana. He has the pleasure to have served His Holiness when His Holiness was serving in Ghana. So please come on stage and if you'd like, say a few words about your experiences. Thank you. We give praise and thanks to the Almighty Allah for this wonderful day today. Today is indeed a very great opportunity for some of us. As I was introduced, three of us are here today from Ghana, Africa. And the three of us happen to be headmaster, headmistresses, or principals of Jamaat institutions in Ghana. In the world, we have an association known as ICP, that is International Convention of Principals. And in every two years, we have a conference in a country that is performing very well as far as education is concerned. This year, it happened that it is Finland that has been identified as the country that is doing very well in education and for that matter, the conference has been located here so that we will come all over the world to come and share ideas and learn from the good practices of our people here and possibly carry it home. So by the grace of Allah, from our Jamaat institutions in Ghana, three of us are here to participate in that conference. As we are here Muslim Ahmadis, I know we would like to hear one or two words about our Jamaat activities in Ghana. By the grace of Allah, Ahmadiyya Jamaat has been in Ghana for a very long time. Indeed, we are left with about six years or thereabout to celebrate our 100 years since Ahmadiyya Jamaat got to the coast of Ghana. In other words, it was in 1921 that the Jamaat was first established in the country. The Jamaat, apart from its religious activities, has gotten himself involved in educational areas. In other words, through the Nusra Jahan scheme, schools have been established in many places in the country, especially in the rural areas. 
when they are deprived of such facilities. Through the Save Nusra Jahan scheme, the Jamaat has established health facilities in such rural areas and is rendering social services to the people of the country. The school where I happen to be the principal, for example, was established in 1950. So the school is as old as 56 years now. It has trained so many Ghanaians to the extent that in Ghana in particular, there is virtually no corner you will go and you will not meet a product of the school. The school trains people without any discrimination. In other words, students are admitted to the school not based on their religious background, but that they want to pursue education. But as they go through the walls of the school, by the time they complete, they get to know a bit about Islam, they get to know about Jamaat al Ahmadiyya, and they have very nice disposition as far as the Jamaat is concerned. As I speak to you now, we have members of parliament in Ghana who are products of the Jamaat school. The Inspector General of Police in Ghana currently is a product of our school, Tia Madia Senior High School, especially the Kumasi one, which happened to be the premier one or the oldest one. Where I come from, Kumasi, which is the second largest city in Ghana, the commander of police in that whole region happened to be a product of the same school. So Alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah, as far as Jamaat activities are concerned, we are making the necessary strides there. The Ahmadiyya Jamaat Ghana now is almost hitting the one million mark in numbers. In Ghana, we are so much established that we also hold our national ijtima, where we come from all over the country to have it. Then from the regional, national ijtima, we have regional ijtima, because the country is divided into regional bases. Then from the regional ijtima, we still go down to have second ijtima. And we hold the ijtima to base on the various wings within the Jamaat. Legendary Imam Ida will have theirs, Ansar Rada will have theirs, Khudam al Ahmadiyya will have that. Even at Fad al Ahmadiyya and Nasrat, they hold Ijtima for them too. So it is thanks that we will give to Allah that by His grace, the Jamaat is making serious progress as far as our activities in Ghana is concerned. Now we have made it a point as principals of the Jamaat that wheresoever we go, we introduce ourselves to the Jamaat that we find ourselves there. So that we relate with them, we get to know what they are doing, and they also get to know us. The wonderful thing we have observed is that once you are an Ahmadi, anywhere you find yourself in this world, you are welcome. We have been to Canada, Toronto, we have been to Australia, and we have come to Finland. And we've seen that the warm reception of the Jamaat is everywhere. We want to take this opportunity to say that it is by Allah's grace that our coming here has coincided with the Finland Jalsa Salana and Alhamdulillah we've been able to attend it yesterday and today we are here with you. Definitely we will carry very good memories of you back to our country to explain to them to know that the promise that was given to the Mahdi Ali Salaam that his mission will spread to all corners of the world Indeed, we are witnesses to it because almost everywhere we go, we see that the Jamaat establishment is there. To the extent that, as I speak to you, we are 35 delegation from Ghana that is in Finland for this conference. When we told them that our Jamaat is having an activity and we are coming to attend, they are wondering and ask what activity. Then we tell them, yes, we have our mission members here, and coincidentally, they are having their annual JASA and we are coming to attend. They had the same experience when we went to other countries. So it's only Allah that we pray that Allah will continue to bless this Jamaat and let us see progress upon progress. And in no time when Islam is mentioned, it is Islam Ahmadiyya that we will refer to. May Allah bless us all. And we are very thankful for this opportunity. With this, I say Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Thank you very much for your uh, first-hand international um, experience that, that you shared personally here uh, with the audience and, and the uh, respected guests.